<laughs> there we go. There we go. I didn't just say the hell of a lot. Hey, everybody, I'm Kyle Rizdal. Welcome back to Make Me Smart, where we make the name make sense. Kimberly's off. She's back next week. Instead, the one, the only, Sabri Benishore, taking the time on a Friday to be with us. Thanks, man. Hey, yeah, thanks for having me. Great to be back. Th- those of you on the, on the live stream, have a look at that background. That's Sabri's bedroom, his plants. I love his plants. Just going to say that. Just going to say that. Yeah, there's... Anyway. Uh, some might say there's too many. <laughs> No, no such things. Anyway, so uh, YouTube live stream, we got the Discord, uh, we got the podcast for Economics on Tap. Today we're going to do the news fix as we do every Friday, a little half full, half empty. Um, and then we'll obviously uh, finish that out with our new thing, the audience poll on that last question. Uh, we will start, I believe, with drinks. I'm going to fess up and say I'm drinking a glass of water. And here's why I'm drinking a glass of water. Because I have to take my 15-year-old to uh, get her hair cut this afternoon because tomorrow's homecoming and I'm on haircut oh. duty. So... You're gonna do the haircutting? You're you're gonna cut no, the hair? No, 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 no. I am oh. I am I am driving. I am driving. Uh-oh. And then in a month, like three weeks, I take her for her learnance permit test. So there's all kinds of stuff going on around here. All oh wow, these are big times. Big milestones. Um, well, you know, last kid left in the house. Everything's big. Yeah. I uh I have a strawberry protein shake because uh that's literally all I have left in the house that's edible. <laughs> I <laughs> I, I, yeah, speaking of going off to college, that's how I am living right now, apparently. There you go. Absolutely there you go. Let's, I'll tell you what, I'll check the, uh, I'll check the comments here. We got, uh, let's see, Jennifer Pierce drinking a Negroni. That's awesome. Uh, Vita is drinking a Tangeray Runk pour lime gin and tonic. That's not terrible. Oh, in the new liquid really assets good. jug from Marketplace. Uh, oh. let's see. There's a Red Bull. Kim M is drinking a watermelon Red Bull, but yes. she's driving too. So be careful, please uh let's see let's see scrolling back hacker sure whatever that is oh, oh oktoberfest margin yeah i'm not a big margin fan uh mm-hmm. let's see all right uh diet dr pepper yeah so, you know there's a good there's a good batch there there's a good batch there tequila and oh my god sarah schlosser you've been here long enough to know you shouldn't drink this tequila and iced peach green tea I don't even know what that is. Oh. I don't even know what that is. All right. I think my protein uh, tell you what, should we do just... <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. You can turn off your camera if that happens. All right. Tell you what, we'll do some news. Then we'll get yeah. to a little half full, half empty, and then we'll move on our merry way. I will go first just because there, there's a certain quantity of, oh, my God, are you kidding me? So there's a report in Bloomberg this afternoon. Uh, A declassified report in Germany says that as late as October 2021, which is, let me remind you, November, December, January, February, four months before the Russians invaded Ukraine, then Chancellor Angela Merkel, here's the quote, saw no risk in Russian gas and the Nord Stream 2 pipeline that Russia had always been a reliable supplier. And I would just like to say, oh, my God, for reals? I, she's been saying that she had been saying that for so yeah. long because this, this has been brought up time and time again. And I, I guess, I don't, I mean, I guess maybe she's just invested in the idea that, you know, countries yeah. can change and benefit of the doubt or something. I don't, I don't know, but it has always seemed crazy to me. Absolute yep. insanity, but okay. Totally agree. Totally agree. And look, you know, given where she came from, right, born in East Germany and rose to the pinnacle of power in a free and democratic Germany. And, you know, you can believe the whole countries can change thing. But, wow, huge miscalculation for which Germany this winter is going to pay the price. And, you know, Germans today and Europe today is paying the price. I just uh, that to me was just an amazeballs kind of story. Yeah. We'll put it on yeah, the show page. Absolutely. Absolutely. Here's, here's another one. And this is going to be a little tough to describe on the radio, but it's a right. it's an excerpt from uh, Senator Patrick Leahy's new memoir. And it's a series of tweets by Garrett Graff, who's written a bunch of really interesting um, uh, uh, first person accounts. What am I thinking of? It's not first person accounts. It's yeah, I suppose it is. It's like, oh, oral histories, oral histories of hmm. uh, Watergate recently and 9-11. Anyway, so in his new memoir, Senator Patrick Leahy, the dean of the Senate, uh, he's 82 years old. He's in uh, in and out of the hospital now because he's really sick. He's got a memoir out. He's from Vermont. He's going to retire. He tells a story about um, in the early 90s when the Iraq, with the original Iraq war debate was going on, sorry, early 2000s, um, 
and he was opposed. And he tells a story about being out walking with his wife and being approached by these mysterious guys on bicycles who suggested to him that he should go to the intelligence officers who were working in the Capitol um, and ask them about certain files having to do with uh, weapons of mass destruction and Saddam Hussein. And it's just a cray cray story. It's like it's out of a spy novel. Leahy goes, he reads these things and they directly contradict what Bush and Cheney are saying in public. He goes and he votes against it. These intelligence officers come back to him and say, okay, now go read these other files. And they directly contradict other stuff that the administration was saying in public. It's crazy stuff, crazy stuff. But American intelligence he, works in crazy ways. I was about to say, does he, like, does he, who were they, those guys? He doesn't say, he doesn't say. He says, I was approached by people on bicycles who told me to go to, so, go to the Hill intelligence officers and say, I wanna see file number eight. And so he said, okay, I'll oh do my that. God. And he went to the Hill and he said, I want to see file number eight. And then he did that. And then two weeks later, they came up to him again when he was out walking with his wife. And they said, okay, now go ask for file number 12. And this means in American intelligence somehow was keeping yeah. an eye on Patrick Leahy. They knew when he was out. They knew what he knew, right? It's weird. It's wild. It's just crazy. And they knew what he didn't know. And they were like acting exactly. in order to. Exactly. Wow, that's wild. That's crazy. Yeah, exactly. So there's that. Uh, you got news or can I, can I, can I ask you a newsy question? Uh, either one, either or both. Um, I was going to, okay. I was going to talk about Kroger buying, um, uh, Albertsons for 20. All right, go ahead. Billion talk about change. Kroger buying Albertsons. And then I got something I want to ask you. Okay. Uh, well, I thought it was, I thought it was interesting because I, I covered this today and I learned a few things I had not, uh, thought about. I just figured it'd be just a run of the mill two grocery stores merging, but, Turns out uh, one of the benefits of, of buying, of eating your competition is uh, your, your credit <laughs> score might increase. So like compared to like Walmart or Target or all these companies, these huge companies that sell all kinds of stuff, they have much better credit rating than what any single mm -hmm. individual grocery store chain. So um, the bigger Kroger gets, the, the cheaper its loans get, which I thought was interesting. And, um, and also it's disrupting, uh, it could have a, it could really mess with Instacart. The reason being, mm -hmm. uh, Kroger has its own delivery system. Albertsons doesn't and was relying on Instacart. And now Kroger is oh. going to go in and supply oh. Albertsons with all this newfangled you know, delivery infrastructure it has. Yeah. And then Instacart is going to be up a creek for a huge you know, source know of uh, clientele. Yeah. It, is it going to make my rutabagas cheaper, though? I I don't know. That's, that was my first question. And I right there's not a clear answer i guess because grocery markets are just so complicated and sometimes sometimes super competitive and sometimes super not and probably depends on where you are but i couldn't right. get a, right. a strong clear answer to that one all right all right here's the thing i want to ask you and and uh we're going to take a two minute detour into the into the geopolitics of the global economy so you've been you've been following what's been going on over in the uk with liz trust and quasi quartung and all that jazz mm -hmm. yeah embarrassing mm -hmm. okay all right super embarrassing so for those who aren't up to speed, uh, Liz Truss, the new prime minister, has done a 180 on a lot of her uh, fiscal policies. She's fired her chancellor of the exchequer in, in the wake of, of market pandemonium um, over in the UK. So here's what I want to know, uh, what I want to know from you. And, and you are a student of, of the global economy. If I live in Sheboygan, why do I care? Well, that's a good question. Um... I mean, the the drama is is entertaining, mm -hmm. um, but well, let's think about that. Um, why do you care if the UK economy is under a tremendous amount of stress? So, so here's um, here's my thought. Here's my yeah. thought. My thought is this is just another element in the global instability. It's another element mm. in the, the global recession, recessionary trend, and it's another element in uh, central banks working together to engineer tighter monetary policy. And I think this is just a real indicator of that. What do you think of that? Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, all right. Yeah, that, that sounds good to me. <laughs> all right. Fair enough. No, it's good. I just, you know, I, mean, I, I respect your opinion so on these things. So someone did someone did once tell me that this was a sign that um you know central banks were were not messing around i guess um mm -hmm. 
But I, I don't know how yeah. far that goes. All right, fair enough. All right, let's play a game, shall we? Oh, yes. Half full, half oh, empty. Oh, yes, this is half dead. full, half empty. <laughs> hosted by Drew Just. It is so indeed. He's like, hmm, sounds like someone should say something now. Uh, this is half full, half empty. Hosted by Drew Jostad. Drew, take it away. All right. Your first topic, a new poll uh, says 5% of adults have received the updated uh, COVID booster. Are you half full or half empty? Only 5%? Really? Well, I mean, I'm half wow. empty on that. That's really low. Yeah. I mean, it's too low. Yeah. I assume. That's crazy. Yeah, I mean, I guess this just means a bunch of people are going to get COVID and be out sick for a week or two. This, uh... <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and that's the thing, right? I mean, it's a time suck now. That's the deal. Yes, hundreds of people are dying, and I understand that. But get your shots, and it'll be okay for you. Man, totally half yeah. empty. It really, Drew, it, it, it really, yeah, it really is a no. Go ahead. Oh, I, I keep I've, stepping I've, on you, Bray. I'm sorry. We got no, no, no. I just remember. I mean. Yes, I uh, obviously for some people, especially people who are not vaccinated or people with underlying problems, it's a much more serious matter. But for everybody else, it really is. It's a huge inconvenience. I, right. Um, yeah, I, I had to. I missed. I missed like two. I missed a. Yeah, I missed a whole vacation because I got sick with. Um, oh, did you really with COVID? Oh man. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah oh, I, oh my gosh! Actually, you know what? I was coming home uh, on the train and my brother was super paranoid about giving giving COVID. this was for, for christmas my brother was super paranoid about me giving or anybody giving COVID to, to our parents so he was like everyone must take a COVID test before you leave and went to arrive. Right. i took a COVID test before i left i was fine took a COVID test when i arrived my mom handed it to me at the train station it turned pink in like 15 seconds and oh yeah oh yeah well that's the i was, thing with was this. so yeah. positive yep and so I yep. did not spend. And so that that was that. I didn't spend Christmas with my family. The funny part is that turns out my dad had COVID the whole time and gave it to my brother. <laughs> so for all his efforts of like, right? Yeah. Anyway. This thing is going to get you. It's going to get you. All right, Drew, go ahead. For the record, another twenty-seven percent of adults said they would get it as soon as possible. So it's not as. It's already grim, possible. I mean, get it yeah, now. No, it possible. It's already possible. <laughs> Jesus. Are you half full or half empty on Meta introducing metaverse avatars with legs? Oh, I saw that. I well, I didn't see it. What I saw was a tweet from Meta that said legs. And I figured that's what it had to be. Well, look, I don't understand why you can't really have legs to begin with. I mean, this goes back to the to the to the Wii, right? That that video game thing, and why you don't have legs there. I don't understand what what's the big deal with legs. I mean, sure, half full. Why did it take so long? Agreed. You know? Yeah. How many how many legs? Robert Enstead says you get two legs. Two legs, Robert. You get two legs. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Drew. <sighs> All right. I have another article here that's that says quotes an executive from kodak saying they literally can't keep up with demand for employees to work with film are you half full or half empty on a comeback for film cameras oh man that's so cool i did not know that i'm hugely full on that i'm a look i dabble in photography i take once every you know five thousand frames i take a really nice picture uh but i'm all in all into film now so uh half full for sure that's so interesting and film is super expensive now too holy cow what is um what is film yeah <laughs> right that's right there's like a generation uh, of people that no that's totally right that's totally right know, i'm half oh full on that God. i just remember being a kid and having film and always uh overexposing yeah. it but i'm half full of people are, that's cute yeah it's good it's good it's like vinyl man mm. all right half full or half empty on I'd phrase this people becoming TikTok influencers influencers by vlogging their work days. I I know what like people at LinkedIn, people at Google, people at Discord, just like here's what it's like to work here. No, no, no. All the way empty. That's I'm going to. Yeah, it's dumb. I'm gonna, and, yeah, yeah. And, and maybe I'm crouching old man, but no. Yeah, empty glass. I don't for sure. 
you know, my own work day is is stressful enough. I don't I don't need <laughs> to see other people's that's exactly work right. days. <laughs> that's exactly right. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Also, right, so are Drew, there employers Drew, watching one? them, by the way? Right, 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 <laughs> right. And then you have that whole productivity theater thing. I mean, what are you gonna do? Send it to your boss and put it in your annual evaluation for crying out loud? <laughs> Oh my God. Speaking of which, I have to do my goals for next year. And anybody at APM listening to this, I know I'm late on my goals. Leave me alone. Uh, okay. So Drew, is this the next one, the last one? Yeah. Okay. So if you're uh, watching the YouTube live stream, and we apologize for whatever was going on with the video there, uh, but it's back. Um, via the YouTube live stream, we're going to put up a poll in the chat. So let us know if you're half full, half empty, and we will give you the results because somebody's going to post it in the Slack channel because I can't figure out how to make it work on uh, my iPad. So, Drew, go. Netflix is launching an ad-supported tier for six ninety nine a month. Are you half full or half empty? Huh. Well, we'll give people some time to vote. Um. Uh. I don't know. I. My half full ads at six ninety nine. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. I'll yes, half full ads for six ninety nine. I'm okay with that. Yeah, I, I would be half full on that as well, just because uh, they they do have to do something <laughs> because yeah. the yeah. competition they're facing right now is uh, is super intense. Yep. I mean, even I th heard someone say TikTok was also was Netflix's competition too. I mean, people just scrolling through God. TikTok. TikTok yeah. is eating the world, man. It is. Um, yeah, but that and you know that and Disney you know Plus. Right, 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 right. Well, so that's that's another thing, right? They're just getting a little expensive. And, you know, I've got, well, let's see. Uh, Netflix, Hulu, HBO Max. Uh, I don't think we have Disney Plus anymore. Um, so I think maybe we've only got three. So I'm good with that. But, you know, you get four or five of those things, and it's a freaking cable bundle, and you're paying $120 a month, you know? Exactly. No. Unless, of course, you use somebody else's password. I'm just saying. <laughs> just, you know, just whatever. Uh, all right. So here's the, here's the poll. Netflix is launching an ad-supported tier. Half full, 38%. Half empty, 62%. That's oh, interesting. You people are people not People hate generous. ads. People, that, that's people hate that's ads. exactly. Well, you know what? We've all gotten accustomed to not having them. I mean, you you think about, you know, kids not knowing what... what um, uh, film is there's a generation of kids growing up not knowing what ads are you know yeah i remember what, That's what ads were and i, I got news looking you, back now. it's kind of hard to, <laughs> hard, hard to so so look you and i have known each other a long time and so i feel okay in saying this <clears throat> you're starting to be of a certain age now i'm just i'm just saying that yeah uh, well you know yeah it's not um so we don't really talk about that on social media. Uh, <laughs> you might see other ages suggested <laughs> on different platforms. Okay. There we go. Understood. Understood. Final poll, by the way, half full 39%, half empty 61% on Netflix launching ad supported tier. Oh my God. All right. So we are done today. Uh, I'm out most of next week, back Friday. Kimberly's back on Monday. Uh, if you've got questions you want us to answer for what do you want to know Wednesday, um let us know you know how to do that and um also for yep. anything else that you want to tell us sabri's going to tell you how to do that yep the number to call is 508 you be smart leave us a voicemail email works too you can reach us at make me smart at marketplace.org make well, me smart it's produced not, by not marissa oh wait music. oh no i don't oh. <laughs> no that was drew drew just jumped right in go ahead sorry <laughs> Make Me Smart is produced by Marissa Cabrera. Today's episode was engineered by Drew Jostad, who also wrote the theme music to Half Full, Half Empty. I will say this is a tough podcast to jump into cold, especially when you haven't done it in a while, and also especially when there's a big <laughs> lag on the Comrex. So that's what's going on today. Team yeah, behind our Friday game is Mel Rosenberg and Emily McCune. Bridget Bodner is running other things at the moment because she hates us. The director of On Demand is Donna Tam. There we go. I got it in. Don, Bridget doesn't really hate us. She's just got other things to do. That's all. That's all. <laughs>